Welcome for joining me in painting this beautiful horse. Um, what I have on my table is watercolor paper, a little strip so I can test a few colors if I want to, my paint palette, make sure you definitely have brown, orange and yellow and then some black and maybe a little bit of red, a towel, your water cup, and then I like to work from a reference photo um, for this particular picture. So I already drew it on and so I can just start painting. Now, <clears throat> before we're going to start, let me share with you if you have a brown. I know my brown, so I know what it looks like. And your brown looks like that. It's kind of a very dark um, brown brown but you want your horse to definitely have more of these tones then I'm gonna add a bit of orange and yellow to my brown and I can change by just mixing some orange some yellow I can change it now, if I want to have it a bit lighter, I would just dip my brush in the water cup again and paint to get a lighter color. So you may want to have a little extra strip of, um, you know, watercolor paper available. So you can just kind of figure out what color your horse should be. So again, more, more paint makes it really dark. And if you add some water, you can dilute it more and more and more and you can always come back and just drop in some yellow to make it warmer or drop in some orange to change the color again so this is what my brown looks like added orange and yellow added more water and then i just showed the right again so just by playing <clears throat> with a different ratio you will be you, you will be able to figure out which one so for me, the way I like to paint watercolor is I like to layer, layer, layer. I love to see the different um, layers of paint. So I would always start my whole painting with a super light layer. And the layer should be so light that it's kind of barely changing the color of your paper. And <clears throat> I would start painting, add water, I'll be like, oh, this is a little yellow. I can just come back and add brown. Maybe some yellow, maybe some orange. A little bit more orange. When you have a lot of water on your paper like this, you kind of can see the bubble it forms. It's so easy to just come back with more water and move it out of the way. I use a number six uh paintbrush but i know that different makes different um sizes so it's kind of hard to say you need a point that's basically what you need you need a paintbrush that can make a really nice point so you can go in and um add all the fine details so i keep on adding at the bottom over here while i paint tiny circles so I don't want to see hard lines and I add water as I go to fill it in. If you have a lot of water in your paper, you can definitely move the paint all around. You don't have to stay in the lines. I kind of sometimes do, but see how light it is. So you definitely want to stay so light. You can, of course, make a big puddle of paint and just paint with that, like on your paint palette. Um, I often like to paint as I go and not make a big puddle. Especially if I know I'm using the same colors, I like that it's not exactly the same everywhere. And I'm just going to go, this is still part of his backside. So for a line that's kind of the end of his body, I would make sure that my line 
is nice and crisp and I would drag my brush along getting that smooth line. Over here, I'm not going to worry so much. I kind of like the unevenness. I can even uneven it a little bit more like this, but I like how that looks and how it dries. So over here, I want to make sure that my lines are pretty. So if I can lift this up, let me see if I can. I'm going to show you how wet it is. How the more water you add, the easier it is to get this soft flowy effect and you will not see any hard lines if you paint. What if you let this dry and it kind of looks a little weird? Clean your brush and have only water on it. Come back from this side and you can kind of drag it out like this. You can soften. I like to use tiny circles. Now, be careful not to break your paper. And I can just come back and add some paint like this. And I want to make it soft, soft, soft up in his hair. And cleaning my brush, I like to touch my towel once, so I just get rid of that extra drop and then come from the other side and blend it out inside his hair. You can do this a few times to make sure that it's really light, like this. Now, if it's wet, you should not paint your um, ear yet. So we're just going to wait with that. So let's come back down to his nose. So cleaning, oh, getting some paint. Dipping my brush in the water so I know it is um, wet and I can paint. If this is wet and you don't want it to flow into each other, you may have to wait or you can just paint super carefully like this, making sure it's not touching. Mine is dry and by lifting it up, I can tell it's not shiny, so it's dry. And painting with water so you don't see any lines. I'm going to go all the way in here. I'm going to leave that little space for now just to help me later. If your pencil lines are too light and you may lose them, I want to say it will be fine. You can just kind of wing it, but um, don't make your pencil lines too dark. You may run into a problem by trying to erase them. Even though I know my paint I can erase, some paints um, you can't. I'm going to leave this little white strip on his nose. I keep on using a really light color. And I add more water to blend it like towards his hair or his mane. Like that. So you kind of want to paint a little fast because you don't really want anything to dry. And then don't, um, yeah, don't let it dry. And then don't let it dry with a hard line. You can come back and kind of just soften it out. And I'm going to go all the way up to his forehead like this, but I'm going to leave a white space. But it's kind of just barely um, like tinting my paper. If you feel a little worried that your paper is buckling, um, when you make paper wet, it is going to buckle, but it does go flat. So don't freak out when this happens. So now we have our first layer of our horse. So if I can give you like a little in, in zoom. 
kind of looks like this. I like how uneven it dries. That's a really beautiful watercolor effect. And now I want to come back and add and build up my layers for his body. So I can put this. So now I want to come back and I want to add and build up a little bit more on these layers. I'm going to come again. So even if you use exactly the same paint you just used and you're going to paint it on top, you will see the difference because watercolor is not opaque. So if I can show you. I'm going to do over here. So I want to make sure that his back leg have a little bit more shadow and his belly is kind of more in the highlight. So I, I didn't add, I mean, I didn't draw all of this, but I can just add it in. Pointing my brush towards my line, I can get a really nice smooth line. So I can kind of plan it out. So I'm going to go like this. But before it dries, I want to come back and mess up that outside line. But because I added that line, it will stay. And then I come back and I mess up this outside and I can drop in color. Oh, not that much orange. Just need to a little bit. You just want to add, 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 maybe add a little bit darker right there. And use your paintbrush like tapping, 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 maybe not even fully painting in long brush strokes, maybe just like tapping, 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 cleaning my brush, touching my towel. And then I, from this side, I want to come back and I kind of want to mess up that hard line I just made. Tiny circles, helpful. You want it to stay like this because you can always come back and add more. You want to add really light layers on top of each other. If it's too wet, it's going to just flow and push all the color to the side. So you may have to wait, depends on how much water you have on your page. Or you can come back at the bottom just add a little bit by tapping 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 it is wet enough that it's not making polka dots it's wet enough that it's flowing i didn't draw in that line so i'm just going to paint it in so tiny tap 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 and if you feel your lines are getting a little too hot clean your brush I do, I go like this, I clean it, I touch it to get that dro extra drop. Sometimes I have to touch my towel and then I can just come and drop a little water in it and it's going to move the paint and it's going to create that nice water effect. Okay, so this could be my first layer or my second layer on this side. Now I want to come to this side. So what you in essentially will see is light, dark, light, dark, because this is his front leg. Okay, so we're going to do exactly the same. Mix, mix, mix. Use your brown, yellow, orange if you don't have a good or a warm brown. And I'm going to, again, point my brush towards his front leg. Like that. And then before this line dries, I clean my brush with water and I come back and I mess it up by pushing it away. Maybe come back and add a little bit more, dragging it out towards his belly like this. Make sure you don't just leave it like that by cleaning your brush. Maybe touch your towel so it's not that wet and then come back and mess up those lines. Don't touch this if it's still wet. So you can come close, but don't touch it. I also feel this area is a little bit washed out, even though on my picture it is really light. Mine is a little too washed out. So I 
can see how his body is having these lines. So I'm going to try to paint a little bit up and down, up and down. And coming back. Like this. Oh, it's very yellow. If this happens, put water down a lot. And then mix it and drag it kind of like this. Whenever you want to have a smooth line, so you don't want to see any little white spots, you point your brush to that part and you just drag it along. And then before you let it dry like that, you clean your brush, maybe touch your towel, so the, the paintbrush is not too wet and then come back and tap, 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 messing up that line. And then you can just come back and add a little bit more to get a more uneven coat. And then always come back and make sure that you mess up any hard lines you see. I'm going to let it dry like this and I'm going to come back to the front section. So see light dog light dog and we may have to come back one more time to just add a few more darker details if you feel that your horse is just looking kind of the same it's totally fine you can lay it as many times as you want at one point you just have to be careful then not to break your paper but you can lay it as many times and maybe but layering you need to let it dry so don't try to lay it when it's wet because then it's just going to mix Okay, I'm starting at this bottom. I want to make it a little darker. I have like this little guideline to help me so I don't go all the way. So, and I'm just want to drop in a few, like a like darker area, like over here. And then, make sure you come back and drag it out and then make your edge soft so um depends on how much water you use yours may look different depend there's many things that that could make that yours doesn't look exactly like mine one thing that i want you to know or to play with is um how much water you actually need you don't really need that much because the spaces are, are really small but you do need enough to make sure that the water the paint can move and then um what one thing that um i want you to be careful with is if you get your cup out of your paintbrush out of your cup, if you dip it in all the way, so you can see it goes like over the silver, then there's always that drop. Let's see if I can show that will sit over here. So even if you touch your towel, the tippy, there's that big drop that sits over there. And then sometimes when you paint, it can drop down. So what water do on paint? is it pushes it all to the side so just be careful that when you come back and you soften the lines that you definitely touch your towel like this so to the side so you grab this little drop that's on the silver as well that happened so many times where you like carefully coming back and then it drops and then it just pushes all the paint out of the way okay so now i want to do the lines by his neck so i'm going to mix my 
same yellow orange I hope you can see on my paint palette my brown my yellow my orange and I may have to start really light and I'm just gonna drag my paintbrush like this not going all the way drag my paintbrush like this and another one and another one so I'm making a few lines like that I'm using my pencil as my guideline I'm pointing my brush towards that line then I'm cleaning my brush touching my towel and I come back from the right side and I kind of want to mess up that line but not on the left side and you may have to clean your brush and do it again maybe point it in so the one side will be a little softer and the other side will be a little harder now you may not see this and you may have to come back and do this again but again the same thing we did over here it's going to be light dark light dark light dark and we're going to continue with that idea to make the folds so this is my first layer i know i can see that i will have to come back and make more however i want this to dry so i'm going to go up to his neck i'm going to just skip this section for now because i don't want the the folds of his neck to be wet and then go into my neck making uh, my mixture and dragging my line oh too much water makes it really light so you want to maybe add a little bit more paint like this so dragging it you can also turn your paper and like pulling you know like sliding your paintbrush across Make sure you don't let it dry. Come back and mess up that line. Kind of pulling it out. Maybe add some different, like maybe more orange, yellow. Tap, 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 but because it's wet, it's flowing. Dropping a little bit more. And then making sure that you... Oh, too much water. Now you will see what happens. It will just kind of make a big blob. And then I am going to come from this side. So I don't want it to be such a hard line. But then I'm going to come from this side and I'm just softening in that line a little bit. If it is too wet, it may flow too much or you may have to just check. But and then I just want to pointing my brush still so I can kind of push it back. But I just want to make for now a soft line. I'm going to come back with another layer so we are not done and I can still see my pencil line where it should be. So all good. Okay, so now I want to come back to the folds in his neck. So before I'm even going to do this one, I need this to dry. So I'm going to come back down to the folds of his neck. And I am making the same exactly lines I did. Making a line, making a line. Like this. And then... Coming back from the other side, like the right hand side, and pushing it a little bit more. This is why you need a paintbrush with a really nice tip. So the size to me doesn't always matter exactly, but you need a little tip so you can just add a definite small line. If you have too much water on your brush, you may not be able to get 
a skinny line like this because the water will make it too heavy and it will make it a big line. You can just touch your towel to get rid of some of the paint. And then I want to just come back a little bit more. Kind of like that. I'm going to add in this little triangle shape a bit of color. And then I want to come and maybe just soften those lines a little bit like this by pushing only water kind of up, messing it up a little bit. And then you can always come back and add more color if you feel you washed it away. So remember that drop of water I just told you about? It just happened over here. It just fell and now it makes this big circle. I'm always happy when it happens so I can because I explain sometimes and then it doesn't happen but then when it happens I'm like see it pushed all the paint like it's already making a line right there so you can just come back and add more water like this or more paint but then you just have to let it dry okay so I'm This is still my original color, so now I just want to come back and add a little bit more. Again, it kind of depends on what yours looks like. So if you have already a pretty color in there, I'm just going to add a few lines like this to, you know, so it looks like the same leg. Soften the line and then let it be like that. Um, while I wait for my neck to dry, while I wait for this to dry, I can come back and visit over here. So maybe you didn't have it dark enough the first time. Maybe you want to add a little bit more color. Pointing your brush to the line. I'm dragging some of the color out a little bit like this. And then... Softening it always come back and soften Try not to paint stripes Even you paint up and down, but you come back and you drag out the color. So try not to paint stripey And doing the same on this one It's a little orangey. It's all good. Come back Smudge it in So definitely a few layers of paint, definitely. It's not just one. I always love how watercolor can layer. It just looks so beautiful. Okay, so, and then touching. So basically making lines, making sure they don't dry with a hard line. Like this, you can just come back. Tap, 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 blending it in. I will come back and add a little bit at the back, at the back leg. Okay, so liking what I did over here, liking all the lines, I think I'm going to let it be for now. It's a little wet. I can kind of add that. And so it's not a super realistic painting. It's definitely realistic enough, but... Um, I'm looking at a reference photo, but I don't have to follow exactly what I see. I kind of, you know, wing it a little bit. But whatever you do, make sure you make some of your lines just a little softer. Tap, tap, tap. And then the water will do the rest for you. Okay, so I really like how his neck and his body is working. And now I want to go up to his, so I'm still waiting a little bit. I'm going to do his head. So, mixing my horse color. Trying not to touch so much orange like I did. 
and I'm gonna point my brush to his jawline and then quickly come back and mess it up make sure that you don't see any awkward white little spots so come back with the tip of your brush and just make sure you are touching the whole line so there's no white little spots and then if you made a hard line make sure that you just mess it up with some water so it doesn't dry like that And I know there's a little white spot there, but I'm just going to pretend I don't see that. If you want to, you can paint that in or leave it open or leave it lighter. I'm just not going to do that. And then I want to come back. So I want to have a little, so we made a little line for his cheek so we can remember. I sometimes when I draw stuff, just want to add so I can remember there should be something there drip um dripping in some paint but then again don't let it dry with those hard edges just come with the tip leave the color in the middle and then just smooch out kind of ooh. see that big drop what it just did it just pushed it all away you can always come back and suck it up it will take off all the color make sure you always take a clean spot and then you have to do it again. Let's see if it works because sometimes you have to wait for it to dry a little bit. Whew, it worked. Okay, so you just want to like add a little bit more color. Um, on the top of his nose, it's a little lighter, it's gonna, it's a little like a light grayish. So I may have to paint this in sections. So I'm gonna come next to his nose, like that little nostril. Maybe add one head of black, and I say one head because I want it to be so little, barely mixing the brown with black. You have to be so careful. Maybe come back with add a little bit. And then I drew a line right there. Just clean my brush, get that drop. Um, and we want to come back with some black. Like, let me just get a little bit more. And we don't want to go all the way. To that edge because we want it to be a little whiter so you can actually see the two lips so I'm gonna go like this there's almost the size of my paintbrush kind of you know the space and then I am messing up that line by dragging out a little bit of that black all the way touching my pencil line okay so we fold in this, uh, this section. So I can add, come back and add a bit more. Please use your paintbrush and your black super carefully because if you have a very dark line of black, it's gonna look a little weird. What you always can do is Make it wetter and then take your towel and just try to suck it up. Okay, and I paint with little dots because I kind of want that texture of his mouth. So I'm painting with by tapping, tapping, tapping. And if I can give you a little tap, tap, tap. And then we can always come back and drag it a little bit out if it's not too wet. 
and then touch the edge so you smooth it in there you go that looks pretty good now i want to come back into the nostril now if this is really wet you should wait a little bit i can i know i can do it because i didn't paint with that much water so be mindful be careful it can smudge and flow i'm gonna add some black you may have to come back and add another layer if your first layer is not dark enough which is totally fine going close maybe not touching making a little turn and then when you get close to his little pinky nose you want to soften it out by just touching and kind of dragging the paint touch 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 you can always come back and add a little bit more black right there but use your black sparingly like use it like i always like to say one head of black and see how far you can go instead of like scooping and twirling a lot and then don't go all the way down leave a little white spot you can always clean your brush make sure to get rid of that water and then push it a little up that same light color you have you kind of want to go around the corner over here towards the other nostril that's kind of right there tiny do you only see a little section It's not going um, all the way down to the side. I There's like a tiny sliver of white that you need to leave. So you will just come back from the right side and kind of just push, push, push the paint back. It's amazing how you actually can push the paint back and let it do what you want it to do. Okay, so I want to let this dry a little bit. So I'm going to, while I have black on my, um, my paintbrush, I'm going to come into his eye. I'm going to outline the top lid. I like to put my hand down like this so I can only let my fingers work for me. I'm going to leave the two triangles white that's in the corner of his eye. I'm going to do an outline. And you don't have to paint it so precise because I'm going to show you how to kind of make a little wash over most of it. We're just going to do that. And then while busy, let's do this one. So there's like a triangle shape, I want to say, on the side. Fold it in. Okay, so he's almost looking like a horse. It kind of looks like an alien horse at the moment. Let's come back to the neck. The neck is dry. This is dry for me, hopefully for you too. Now, if yours bleeded and washed over a lot then you can come back with some water and you can kind of just push it a little bit to that side push 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 and then i am making a line from this side i'm going to make it a little darker If it's easier, turn your page. And by turning, I mean, you know, kind of like this so you can make a 
pretty nice line. And then come back, blend it in. Just add some color like that. And then make sure you don't paint a line. So come back if you have a line and drag it out. Smudge it in. Like this. If it's really too wet, you shouldn't do this step, but if you can, you can just come back. So again, you, you, may, you may not need to do all the steps I'm doing. It depends on how your first layer kind of ended up. So you may have to skip this. If your neck is perfectly fine, you may have to skip this step. You don't have to do it. And so I just want to add and tap, 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 so I can have an uneven line. So I'm still telling you what I'm doing, but maybe you don't even need this step. And then I just want to have a tiny triangle. That's a little dog left right over there. And I can see how it will flow. And I can drag it up. Making sure that it doesn't dry so hard. And maybe you had too much water and it just take it all away. That happens. So have to do it again so to me watercolor is really unpredictable but as soon as you step away and you just let the water kind of do the thing it is just so magical okay so let's come back down to this one it should be dry enough and then on this one there's like a little open space which i clearly didn't have and i'm just gonna make a little arch show his back leg i'm just gonna do this Making a little arch like that kind of in the shape of a triangle and then i can just come back and maybe add a little bit more at the bottom leg making sure i soften my lines checking my bum if there's lines that's really awkward i can always just come back with water circles mix 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 move 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 the paint maybe drop in a little bit to show his different muscles Always, always come back and just soften a little bit of the lines you just made. So, you can do a gazillion layers, I want to say. Always, always make sure you soften the lines. And then you want to see light dog, light dog, light dog to just show his 3D um, silhouette or not silhouette, um, the 3D. Okay, N now I want to come back into the bottom lip, pointing my brush to get that pretty line. I can actually outline it like this 
if you have too much paint or water on your brush, it's going to be too hot. So you may have to just touch your towel to get rid of some of the paint. And then paint his lip. And soften that line on the outside. You may have to come back and do another layer. Depends. Go all the way like that. Double check your nostrils to see if you think you need a little bit more black. Maybe you don't. I may want to just go like this in this one. And then tap, 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 tap to let it blend out. Tap, tap, tap. Now I want to come into and making my, so definitely clean your brush really well. And I just clean my brush like swirl, swirl, swirl. Adding my brown, my orange, yellow. Coming next to the white spot on his uh, nose, on top of his nose. Coming right in there. And then I see my line, so I quickly want to come back and mess up that line. With water, so I just come back with water, maybe drip, drip it in again if you take it too much away. Remember, we can come back and layer more. I'm going to go a little bit more on his cheekbone or his jawline or whatever this is. Tap, tap, tap. And then maybe go up. And always soften and drag out. Okay, so remember we had that big drop over there. So I can now just come back and try to do it again like this. And then maybe be careful of that drop of water. Come back. Then this looks a little awkward. So I need to come back with some of my brown. My brown, orangey, yellow color. And without making a, a definite line, I want to make sure that you soften the edges. If you just need some color over there. And then if I look at this, it's a little bit more of that black. So I'm going to go in my black and I'm going to touch a little bit. Honestly, swirl your paintbrush. I don't even know. I don't even use the black. I use like the white spot next to the black with a little bit of black paint in it. If you have too much black, always make everything like wet and then just suck it up. I want to make a little bit brown, black in this corner so I have that so now I just want to come back with some black and mix it with that brown and then if you see any hard lines like I can see over there you just clean your brush make sure you get that drop of water and come back touching 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 let it blend I'm going to do the same um, on this side. So his nostril is right, right there. But then this little piece needs to be a little darker. By putting my hand down, let me just get paint. By putting my hand down like this, I can drag 
my paintbrush the little tip towards me to get a really smooth line. So for me, painting up in the air, I'm more likely to squash down my paintbrush. But if I put my hand down, I can get pretty skinny line. So I want to make this side also a little browner. That's kind of touching the white um, line, this line in his nose, on his nose. And then check to see if you need color over here. Blend it in, don't let it just dry, maybe drag it towards you. Like that. So now I want to work on his, um, I want to come back to the, the nose. I may have to wait. You may have to wait if it's really wet over here. So maybe let's go to the eye. Um, again, if you feel, because I cannot see really what you are doing. If you feel the it's too wishy-washy, you can always come back and just add more color. Make Always make sure you come back and soften the line so it's not just hard or weird spots. Um, before we go to the eye, because I just painted the cheekbone, I'm just going to do this again. And then come back, mess it up. And most of the time you can you are, you can move the paint. So you can just come back with your paintbrush, pushing, pushing, pushing. Okay. I think this looks good. I think I can leave it like that. Now, and I kind of like what's happening over here, so I think it's good. Now I wanna he have these little smudges around his eye. So I'm going to come back with my paintbrush and only water. I'm going to make it wet, make it wet on the top. Then not just black, but I'm going to do my mixture and then I'm going to add a little bit of black. So sometimes black, black just makes it all gray. So if you add a little bit of color in it, it's just a little nicer. And I'm going to tap it so the water kind of moves it. So my first layer is wet, just water, and then I'm going to come back like that. And then drop in more water and then let it kind of flow. And then just and make uneven edges. And then just wait for it to dry. You may not need to add even more. Um, what I have to do that I can see is I will have to make my black of my eye a little blacker. So I'm just going to use my tip. Using that. And if it's wet, it is going to flow all naturally and pretty. So I would just let see what happens. Or you may have to come back and add a little bit more. But see how it just flows. And then I'm going to do the same with this one. I think I need to just make my eye darker. So one of the hardest things to me is to let the water do the work for you. Like step away and just let it dry before you want to touch, touch, touch again. Because watercolor always dries a little lighter. 
and so it looks really dark and you're like oh no i don't like it but however just let it dry and see um how it dries and then before you kind of freak out not that you should freak out but just let it dry okay so now i just want to do the same on this side i give him a little black eye like a little smudge drop 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 I'm just gonna let it dry for now. I I know that you might wanna you can drop in more, but depends on what yours looks like. I would just let it dry. Looks pretty. Now, if you feel your mouth so if you look at the picture you can see the eye and the mouth is really dark if you feel your mouth is too light then remember we can layer so you can just always come back add a little bit more i would always stay still stay light and then layer and layer and layer then to just come back and try to make it dark all at the same time and maybe tap 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 nostril can go a little darker so always always easy to just come back and layer but if you have it dark from the beginning and you don't like it then it's really tricky to try to make it softer so i want to make this a little bit more smoother the transition so i'm going to come with my black and tap 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 Maybe soften those lines. Maybe, you know, add more brown. It depends on how much color you have right there. And a little water to just smooth it over. Maybe you need some color on top of his nose again, like over here. You just come back and add. Try not to paint with too much water so you don't sit with like a big puddle. When you have this, come back. And smudge it in. Then I want to add some light, like gray, um, like a little uneven over there. So I'm going to make the lines a little uneven like this. It's maybe a little too dark. This is now in the white of his nose. And I may want to come back in this one. I want to add that little bit of pink. What I need to do is I want to take like a tiny amount of my red, but tiny amount. So um, if I can just rely on my little strip again. So my red is like this. But if you have red and you add black, you kind of change the color so i would have one head of red one head of pink uh black sorry and i would be able to get that nose pinky color it's not really pink it's more of a i mean it's pink but i mean you dirty it up with a little bit of black and then paint this bottom section like that slight pink like that and maybe his bottom lip you can have a little line and then drag it up 
so it becomes white again. So the pink is only at the bottom. And if I show you an up close personal one, it's a little bit at the bottom. Now, see how he eyes, his eye is drying? I really like it. I think it's good enough. I don't even think we need to add anything else on mine. Um, if you feel you need to add anything on yours, go ahead and add maybe more. I am ready to paint his mane. So this one's mane is really light. So I am going to do like a yellow brownish, maybe even with a little bit of black. You, again, it's kind of decide, oh, we need to still paint the ear. I kind of want to just paint a yellowish color, but I don't want to have my sunshine yellow. So I'm going to be careful not to just use my yellow as it is. I'm going to either add brown, maybe one head of black. And I just want to come back. and add that and then we have to remember to come back and paint the ear okay so be careful not to um, make it too dark again it's really light you can always come back and move the paint so if it's too dark then you can just come back move the paint around Kind of paint like this. And if you have a lot of white at the top of your head, you know, just fill it in like this. So it looks a little weird, I know. Okay, so while we wait for that to dry, um, maybe see if there's any other places, because you know, you can always just paint more and more and more. Any other places you think you need to paint or you want to paint. Um, I think I may want to paint a little bit on his face. So mixing, mixing, mixing. Just like I want to... Oh, not such a pretty color that I have over here. A little too ooh, now it's a little too orange and whenever you feel you have too much water you can always just take always a clean spot and then just suck it up it's very unpredictable sometimes what the water will do just waiting actually while waiting for the hair to dry because we need to paint the ear okay now it looks dry enough I first want to paint the ear. Cannot believe I forgot about the ear. It's just this triangle shape, kind of like that. And smoothing it out. So I have the ear like that. It kind of looks a little weird until we're going to add the hair or the mane. Um, you 
can always make it a little lighter by just adding more water and then you can add a bit over here okay now we want to add the main so what i did um what i was thinking i'm going to do is i'm going to use my brown because it's hard to paint the, those light i mean then we could kind of be done but i'm just going to add a little bit um brown the kind of the colors that i used and i'm just going to kind of try to do flowy lines I'm not putting my whole hand down. I'm kind of just putting my by my elbow because I still want to feel this flowy effect without squashing down my brush too much. And I'm just going to use the tip to kind of create some lines. So my first layer is light. My first yellow kind of layer is giving that idea. And then I'm just going to come back and use the same brownish color I used. And you, if you want to add more black to this, of course you can. And then just using, so I'm kind of looking at the flow. And I'm kind of doing that. But by using only the tip of my paintbrush, I can get real skinny lines. And I'm kind of want to have my, my lines a little bit broken up. So I don't, I don't really need to make long lines. And then when it's coming together over here, um, like over here on his forehead, I want to say, I'm just going to do a few more. You may have to let it dry, depends on how much water you have on your brush, and then come back and add a few more. You do not see the other ear, so I didn't paint in the other ear. And there's like a few wispy ones standing up like that. I mean, you can't really tell. Adding a little bit of black to my brown in a few areas can also look pretty. But always um, use your color super light because you can always come back and add more. But if it's so dark and you don't like it, then it's kind of tricky to come back and, and lighten it. And then, again, at one point, you need to know when to stop. If you have too much hair going on. And then I don't stop, but I mean, 
I'm just saying at one point you need to know when to stop and that's it I really like him I hope you had fun painting with me